Night gathers, and now my watch begins. It shall not end until my death. I shall take no wife, no lands, father no children. I shall wear no crowns and win no glory. I shall live and die at my post. I am the sword in the darkness. I am the watcher on the wall. I am the shield that guards the realms of men. I pledge my life and honor to the night's watch for this night and all nights to come. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of The Toy Shelf. I'm your host, Mitch Live. And winter is coming. Because it's seasonal. That's, that's how the seasons work. Today, we are having a look at a figure line based on one of the most popular television series of all time, Game of Thrones. This figure line is by a toy manufacturer that I'm sure we're all very familiar with called Funko Toys. I know what you're thinking. These don't look like silly cartoon bobbleheads, and that is because Funko does have the ability to actually make good-looking figures if they choose to. Game of Thrones is an HBO series based on a book series written by George R. R. Martin, and it follows a few powerful families in a medieval fantasy world as they conspire with and backstab each other, sometimes quite literally, all to conquer and hold the most coveted seat of power in all of the Seven Kingdoms, the Iron Throne. This throne is not actually a Funko piece, but it is a very decent replica of the Iron Throne from the show, and it perfectly matches this five inch figure line. So I was able to just kind of sit Daenerys there in the Iron Throne. This is my very first piece of Game of Thrones merch. And I've actually, unfortunately, broke a couple tips of the swords off here, and uh, I was able to glue most of them back on. I'm just, I'm just missing this one little one, but you can barely tell. It's still beautiful. Look, it's beautiful. Sitting on the Iron Throne, I have the first piece that we're gonna look at here, we have Daenerys Stormborn of the House Targaryen, the Unburnt, Queen of the Andals and the First Men, Breaker of Chains, Freer of Slaves, Protector of the Realm, and Mother of Dragons. Or Danny, if y'all are tight. And take a good look at this scene, folks. This is the scene that I just wanted to see so badly for so many years. <sighs> but alas, we never do get to see this. And realistically, I think a part of me knew all along that we'd, we'd never get to see this. Mostly because it was very clear that the writer wants you to want this, and, and then they never give you what you want in Game of Thrones. But just because she doesn't end up on the throne, it, it doesn't mean that the series is going to end on such a shitty note, where in like the course of two episodes, our favorite character just goes all mad king and just loses her mind and we only get six episodes for what should have been the most epic season of television in all of history not to mention the way they diminished so many anticipated moments like the hound versus the mountain which should have been one of the most epic sword duels that we've ever seen on screen but instead it's just full of bad CGI and just jump cuts and just, and just pulling away from the fight entirely I mean I mean when have we ever not watched a fight in real time in game of Thrones! Why, HBO? Why? <coughs> Sorry, folks. I feel much better having got that off my chest. <laughs> anyway. Next, we've got Tyrion Lannister. Tyrion Lannister. The imp. He drinks, and he knows things. This is specifically Tyrion from the episode Blackwater, which features the infamous Battle of Blackwater Bay. You can tell because of the armor that he's wearing, and this is the axe that he wields during that battle. In fact, all of these figures are either from season one or season two, and they just they just stopped making figures after that point. I don't know why. Because obviously Funko wanted to go focus on making stupid pop figures. It doesn't matter. And that episode actually features one of my favorite moments for Tyrion Lannister in the entire series. They say I'm half a man, but what does that make the lot of you? And next we're gonna have a look at... Jamie Lannister, or the Kingslayer. This is season one, Jamie. Again, you can tell because of the armor, uh, the fact that he hasn't cut his hair, and, uh, oh yeah, the fact that he has both of his hands. And you can see he is carrying a sword, uh, which can't be the Valyrian steel sword because if it's season one, he doesn't have that yet. But it does appear to have a gold lion's head, which is, of course, the gold lion is synonymous with the Lannister name. But I also have 
not a Funko accessory, a smaller replica of one of his later swords. Now this, I do believe, is a Valyrian sword. It is either Heart Eater or Oath Keeper. One of the two that is uh, melted down from one of Ned Stark's swords. But that is just another nice piece that I have. I will say the detail on this weapon, especially the lion's head, is, eh, it's lacking. You can almost just barely tell what it is. In fact, you can probably only tell what it is because it comes with Jamie Lannister. But the detail on the actual figure, uh, the likeness of the actor, and the detail in the armor, everything else is pretty spot on. Which again, impresses me, especially considering it's Funko Toys. Uh, next, we'll have a look at uh, one of his sort of love interests throughout the show, Brienne of Tarth. Brienne is a beast that you don't want to mess with. She has a strong sense of honor, and she's a badass fighter. She first pledges her sword to Renly Baratheon, and then sort of Catelyn, and then sort of Jaime, but really she's just still honoring her oath to Catelyn by seeking out it. It doesn't matter. And I will also say that Brienne versus the Hound is one of my favorite fight scenes in the entire series. She's also one of the tallest figures in this toy line, which checks out because uh, she's quite tall in the show and in the books. Next, we've got Cal Drogo of the Dothraki and Danny's late husband. He comes with all sorts of very iconic Dothraki weapons, and I think it's one of the most accurate portrayals of the likeness of the character from the show. Next, we've got one of my favorite characters, Sandor Clegane, AKA the Hound. He may look like he's standing funny, and that's because this figure has one really shitty leg, uh, and it just kind of form fits together, and sometimes it falls out, so uh, I've got him standing as best as I can, and he comes with both of his swords that he carries in the series, and again, season one Clegane, you can tell because of the armor he's wearing, and he comes with this really badass hound-shaped helm. You see him wearing this helmet in some early episodes of Game of Thrones, but unfortunately, uh, even though it looks like it would be big enough to fit over his head, the opening is a little tight, and uh, it doesn't really fit on his head. I've tried a couple times, wrist breaking it, not gonna try it again. The jaw does move a little bit. Grop, 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 grop. And it is a very cool accessory. Just sucks that it doesn't fit. Uh, next, we're gonna have a look at this White Walker. Now, he isn't any special White Walker. He's not the Night King or anybody, but I think you can tell specifically which one he is by the weapon that he holds. It's not an entire ice spear, it's just an ice-tipped spear. And I believe that this is the first White Walker that uh, Sam kills with a piece of dragon glass. Next, we are gonna have a look at some of the Stark family. Starting with Lord Eddard Stark, or Ned, if y'all are tight. Now, this is one of the only shows that introduces you to a strong lead main character that you fall in love with, which they proceed to kill in the first season, but then somehow the show goes on and only gets better, until it doesn't. And he is, of course, the head of the Stark family, the ruler of Winterfell, and the Warden of the North. He believes in honor and duty above all else, and he always tries to keep a good head on his shoulders. And next, we're gonna have a look at his oldest son, Rob Stark. Rob Stark becomes the head of the family after the tragic death of his father, and he's the first Stark in many generations to be declared the King of the North. The King of the North! The King of the North! The King of the North! And next, we're gonna have a look at the middle child, Arya Stark. I believe this is season two, Arya, where she's pretending to be a boy. She is holding her iconic sword, Needle, and something just looks off about this figure. I don't really feel like they did this character justice. She's got this piece of hair that's just, uh, I don't know what it's doing. It, 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 it just doesn't look right. Why'd you do it, Funko? So that's unfortunate for her. And finally, we have Jon Snow. The falsely named Bastard of Winterfell, former Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, and true heir to the Targaryen Empire, and scapegoat for the entire Seven Kingdoms. While they did not quite stick the landing on the series finale, I think it's safe to say that Jon Snow is the true hero of the series. He's the underdog of underdogs, who makes endless self-sacrifices for the good of all mankind, who never gets the credit that he deserves, and is just too humble to care. Oh yeah, there's one other figure that I forgot to look at from this collection, and that is, of course, Daenerys Stormborn of the House Targaryen. The yeah, you know, a goddamn alternate version. Damn you alternate versions! 
Like I said, they pretty much stopped making figures after season two, and instead of making any of the iconic characters that we don't have yet, they figured what we really want is Daenerys in a different outfit. But nonetheless, there she is, and the accessory she comes with is the symbolic whip thing that she's given when she purchases the Unsullied army before she frees them and then just tosses that thing away. And with that, we get to mark this figure collection complete. And that is actually it for the Funko pieces, but I do have a couple other things I'm gonna show off here, including Ghost. He's a direwolf and Jon Snow's greatest companion. He's from a slightly smaller scale collection, so a direwolf would stand a little bit taller in comparison to these figures, but he still is Ghost and he's still Jon Snow's good buddy and just, just, they're just two of a kind. They just belong together. And I've got this little desk trinket. Uh, this is the three-eyed raven. It's a raven. He's got three eyes. Oh, and, and I've also got a couple of swords. So here I've got this ice sword, which is, of course, magical ice, magical evil ice. This is uh, one of the White Walkers wield this ice sword. You can tell it's almost completely see-through, but it is a little frosted to make it look like an authentic icicle. And this is pretty screen accurate looking. And we've got Long Claw. Now, this is definitely not a screen accurate Long Claw, but uh, it is the dire wolf head on a Valyrian steel sword. And Long Claw was, of course, traditionally a Mormont sword with a bear's head, but then it was refashioned with. It doesn't matter. This is Long Claw. And this brings us to the end of another episode. Thanks so much for hanging out with us on the Toy Shelf. And remember, winter is coming. There must always be a Stark in Winterfell. All men must die. What is dead may never die. A Lannister always pays his debts. I wish you good fortune in the wars to come. The night is dark and full of terrors. When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. There is no middle ground. And remember, no matter what the Red Priestess or the Three-Eyed Raven tells you, you're never too old to play with toys.